The world's first hydrogen combustion outboard motor is here. A big thanks to Yamaha for bringing me out to SEMA to check it out and for sponsoring this video where we'll deep dive into the fascinating engineering involved to make this concept a reality. After speaking with several of the engineers involved, we're going to cover the following questions in this video. First, what is hydrogen combustion? Second, how does Yamaha's prototype boat work? Third, what kind of range can a hydrogen boat get? And fourth, what are the unique challenges for hydrogen boats? Now, before we get into it, I want to be very clear that this is a prototype build, an engineering proof of concept for hydrogen combustion, which is one of many potential solutions for reducing the carbon emissions in marine transportation, but obviously not the only solution. Yamaha is looking into all kinds of different technologies, whether that's battery electric, fuel cell, sustainable fuels, or even hydrogen combustion. So while that is what this specific video will focus entirely on, know that Yamaha is exploring multiple options, seeing what technology might work for different applications. So just as an example, this prototype build is based on a 26-foot offshore fishing boat, which normally comes with a 107-gallon gasoline fuel tank. If you were to try and go electric, even if you assume the electric powertrain was three times as efficient, that'd mean you'd need a 1200 kilowatt hour battery pack to match the range. And that battery could weigh about 13,000 pounds with current pack level lithium ion battery technology. That's about 4,000 pounds more than the entire gasoline version of this boat in just batteries alone. So it'd be super expensive and crazy heavy, making it obviously challenging for this kind of long range application. All right, so why might hydrogen be a solution? Well, several reasons. Hydrogen combustion has virtually no carbon emissions, hydrogen fuel is very lightweight, and hydrogen combustion makes use of existing technology. So the big perk of using hydrogen as your fuel source is that the main emission of combusting that hydrogen is going to be water. So if you don't have carbon in the fuel, well then the emissions from that fuel are not going to have carbon in them. Unlike gasoline, of course, which has carbon in the fuel and thus CO2 is a big part of the emissions. The combustion process is very similar to the same four strokes you're used to in a gasoline engine, but with an altered cylinder head and the hydrogen fuel injection system. But in principle, it runs very similar to the kinds of engines boats are already running on today. Direct injection is one key piece of technology used, which plays an important role with hydrogen combustion. So with naturally aspirated combustion engines like the one that this boat is using, using direct injection is really important for hitting power targets. So why is that. Well, with port injection, you're going to have a lot of space that is just taken up by that hydrogen. So unlike gasoline, hydrogen takes up a ton of space at atmospheric pressures. So if you're dumping in that fuel in the port and then relying on this piston to pull in the air and fuel, well, hydrogen has about a 2.4 to 1 stoichiometric air fuel ratio by volume, meaning once you pull in all that air, only about 70% of that space is actually going to be air and about 30 30% of that space is the hydrogen fuel. So if you reduce the amount of air that you have within the cylinder, well, you're reducing the amount of oxygen that you can then use to react with that hydrogen and make more power. So you're instantly taking a big power hit because you're limited on how much air you can pull in within that cylinder because hydrogen takes up so much space. You also, of course, have the risk of backfire since you have hydrogen in that intake manifold. Now, with direct injection, you can pull in that 100% atmospheric air within that cylinder, and then you can use direct injection and pressurize and force in additional hydrogen within that chamber. So you can make significantly more power, especially in these naturally aspirated applications. And of course, because you're keeping that hydrogen within the cylinder, much lower risk of having backfire. All right, so let's move on to the actual prototype build. In this case, Yamaha is the brains behind the combustion engine. Roush has engineered the fuel system, and Regulator has provided and adapted their 26-foot offshore hull to accommodate the hydrogen fuel tanks. So how does it all work? All right, so with this boat, there are three high-pressure, large hydrogen tanks. They are storing that gaseous hydrogen at 700 bar. Again, hydrogen takes up a lot of space at atmospheric pressure, so you have to pressurize it to get more hydrogen in a smaller space, about 10,000 PSI. So from these tanks, they all run into a common collector. You, of course, will have a shutoff valve, and you've got solenoids, so you can isolate individual tanks or if you need to fill the tanks. Uh, and then from there, you're at 700 bar, you go through a 
regulator and you drop that down to 100 bar. So that is the injection pressure for the fuel injection system, the direct injection system. And because your tanks are pressurized, you're not using a fuel pump. All of the pressure to inject that fuel is coming from the pressure of these tanks and then being injected into those cylinders at 100 bar. Now, these are in parallel, all of them collecting with a common collector here, because if you were to have any issues with one tank, you don't want it to then cut off another tank. So if this fed to this, fed to this, and you had a problem with one tank for some reason, well, you can still use these tanks shut this one off they all go to a common collector and you can use all three tanks simultaneously to supply that fuel to the v8 engine in this case a 5.6 liter v8 engine that this is based on which the gasoline version is making about 450 horsepower the challenge here of course is trying to match that performance while making minimal changes to the combustion design so hydrogen is capable of making similar power, similar efficiency, uh, but challenging to do that when you're starting with a gas engine and then trying to minimize what tweaks you need to make in order to make that whole system work. So of course, different cylinder head here, and of course that different fuel injection system. As for the hull, there are some serious modifications required in order to accommodate the hydrogen fuel tanks. Usually, you're reliant on the hull as well as the grid of stringers and bulkheads to make up the structural rigidity of the boat. In this case, because the stringers and bulkheads need to be adjusted to make room for the hydrogen tanks, the deck of the boat is now used as a more structural member to increase the rigidity to match the same requirements as the gasoline version of this boat. And of course, adding all of these tanks does add weight. While the hydrogen fuel is lighter than gasoline, the boat weighs over 600 pounds more with the new fuel system. All right, looking at these tanks, what kind of range can we expect from this boat? Now, it's important to recognize that there are currently two versions of this prototype that are built. There's the show boat, as we see here for use at trade shows like SEMA, and an actual demo boat that's being used by Yamaha for internal testing. As it's still under development, Yamaha has not released any official numbers surrounding power output or range. But this is engineering explained, so of course we're going to try and calculate what the actual range is. And so that we're perfectly clear, these are my numbers, based on my assumptions, not numbers provided by Yamaha. But I'm pretty confident I can get close. So let's get into it. All right, so first, let's look at the production gasoline version of this boat. All right, so the gas version of this boat is the Regulator 26XO with a Yamaha 450 horsepower motor. So this boat has a gasoline fuel tank of 107 gallons, and you can look at the fuel economy versus RPM curve and find this peak right here. It exists at about 4,000 RPM. This thing will get 1.94 miles per gallon. So multiply the number of gallons by your MPG, and we get a total range for the gas boat at about 207 0.6 miles. All right, so now looking at the prototype, we need to figure out how much hydrogen we have stored between these three hydrogen tanks. Luckily, there's a label on the tanks, so we can look up the specs for this tank, which looks to be about 240 liters, and they store hydrogen at 700 bar, or 10,000 PSI. All right, so a 240 liter tank storing hydrogen at 700 bar is gonna give us about 9.8 kilograms of hydrogen. However, these tanks are effectively empty when they reach 100 bar because we don't have a fuel pump and we're reliant on that pressure for injecting into the engine. So we have to subtract the amount of hydrogen that will be stored at 100 bar in these tanks. So 100 bar for each tank is going to give us about 1.9 kilograms of hydrogen. Hydrogen. So we have three tanks, each of which gives us a usable 7.9 kilograms or a grand total of about 23.7 kilograms of hydrogen stored on board. Now, hydrogen has about the same energy equivalency as a gallon of gas. One kilogram of hydrogen is about equivalent to one gallon of gas. So if we take 23.7 kilograms of hydrogen and we divide that by 107 gallons of gas and we multiply that by our total range of 207.6 miles, that gives us a hydrogen fuel range of 46 miles. 
All right, so obviously range is a very serious challenge. We're at less than a quarter of the gasoline boat's range. And just to back this math up, if we want to minimize assumptions with our calculations, we can simply look at energy equivalency to see how much hydrogen the boat would need to store in order to match the amount of energy stored with gasoline. Now again, a kilogram of hydrogen is about the energy equivalent of one gallon of gas. So if the boat has 107 gallons of gas, well, it's gonna need about 107 kilograms of hydrogen to have an energy equivalency. Now, hydrogen stored at 700 bar has a density of about 40 kilograms per meter cubed, meaning you're going to need 2.675 meters cubed of hydrogen stored at 700 bar in order to get 107 kilograms of hydrogen or about a 707 gallon fuel tank. All right, so obviously that is a massive fuel tank. So how can we improve the range of this boat assuming it runs on hydrogen combustion? Okay, so the obvious answer is you use more tanks, right? Well, the challenge is you need a lot of tanks, over 13 tanks of what we see here on this boat in order to make the equivalent range of the gasoline version. Also a simple obvious idea, use a hydrogen pump, right? Because you have all that fuel just sitting in these tanks at 100 bar that you can't use because you don't have a fuel pump. So that would give you an additional 20% usable hydrogen. If you went with larger diameter tanks, if you go from about half meter to about 0.7 meter, so a 200 millimeter increase in the diameter of these tanks, you can effectively double how much hydrogen you're storing. Of course, that's a bigger tank, you gotta put it somewhere, but an efficient way of doing it. Also, you could use conformal tanks, so this is a more space efficient way of putting, you know, cylinders within a rectangular area. So if you just have one big cylinder, there's a lot of wasted space around that circle that you could be using. So conformal tanks take advantage of that and you use smaller cylinders all connected together to make use of that extra space again giving you a benefit of about 25% increase in hydrogen. You could use higher pressure hydrogen. Uh, there are stationary storage tanks that are holding pressurized gaseous hydrogen at 950 bar. That gives you an increase of about 25% and then there's also liquid hydrogen which over this gaseous hydrogen at 700 bar liquid hydrogen is going to allow you to store 75% more hydrogen within the same space. Now, there are a lot of practical reasons why liquid hydrogen isn't used, which I have other videos covering in more detail, but it all comes down to the fact that liquid hydrogen needs to be stored at minus 253 degrees Celsius, which alone is difficult, but also means that hydrogen will eventually have to be vented out of the vehicle, wasted entirely if you don't use it, because it starts to boil and the tank pressure rises rapidly. Ultimately, one of the biggest challenges with hydrogen is where do you put it? Because despite the fuel not weighing much, it takes up a lot of space. That means anywhere you store these hydrogen tanks, well, you're actually taking away from potential storage space from the boat, reducing cargo space and practicality. But the challenges don't end there. There's actually some really interesting engineering required, so I want to dive a little deeper into the tanks as well as discussing hydrogen leaks. Something I did not know about these hydrogen tanks is that they actually expand a significant amount as you pressurize them with that hydrogen. They can grow as much as about 50 millimeters, we're talking about about a two meter tank in length, and they can grow about 30 millimeters in diameter. So this is a significant increase in the size of that tank, which you of course have to accommodate for. So one of the ways is you're only gonna fix it for the mounting on one side, allow that tank to grow in the lengthwise direction here, and then have a collar that holds it in place that that tank can then slide within the collar. Also, they don't want this to be a stressed member of the boat. So these collars are gonna be able to pivot so that you're not stressing this tank itself. Another really interesting challenge is that hydrogen is a very small molecule and it doesn't like being stored. So these hydrogen tanks have permeation standards that they have to meet, ensuring a minimal amount of hydrogen escapes. But the fact remains that some hydrogen will escape. Now, these permeation rates are really low, so from a range standpoint, it's really not something you need to think about. 
but you don't want hydrogen accumulating within the hull of the boat. Hydrogen, of course, is flammable. So as you have this hydrogen permeate out of these tanks, you wanna make sure that you have proper ventilation to get rid of that and let it escape. So for example, within this boat, there are sensors that detect the hydrogen percentage within the air, within that hull. And so they will warn the driver when hydrogen gets to about 1% and they will shut down the boat if hydrogen gets to about 2%. Now this is below when hydrogen is flammable. So you don't have to worry about it yet at these percentages, but you of course need to be aware of these problems if you do have a hydrogen leak somewhere. Now you have vent ventilation within this hole in order to purge. So on startup, for example, it can purge the entire air within that hole in a matter of seconds. So you purge out all that air, then you start up the engine so you don't have to worry about hydrogen accumulation within that hole on startup and causing any scene. So overall, it's a fascinating project that Yamaha is working on, and it'll be interesting to see the results of their testing as the prototype is further developed. A big thanks to Yamaha for having me out to SEMA and for sponsoring this video. If you all have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.